I'm gonna do something a little bit different in this video and answer some of the most asked questions that I've been seeing recently on Instagram and on the comments on YouTube. So I have 10 questions in front of me and I'll go through them one by one and hopefully give you guys some answers to those questions. The first question is, was it hard to learn flying in and out of O'Hare? The answer is yes. Yeah. So O'Hare is a very challenging airport at first. It can feel overwhelming and people really hype it up as being a really challenging airport. ETC is extremely fast on the radios. They expect you to know what you're doing a lot of the time. There are many standard taxi routes that can be extremely long. Sometimes I'm even taxiing on the ground here longer than I was in the air on some of our shortest flights. Uh, but over time, when you're working here, you do get used to the flow. And as long as the weather is pretty good, O'Hare has a really nice flow to it and it can actually be pretty easy. I'll be making an entire video about flying in and out of O'Hare soon, so stay tuned for that pretty soon. Second question is, how do you eat healthy while you're working? The answer is that's really, really tough. So eating healthy while you're working is really challenging as an airline pilot. We're flying in and out on quick turns all day. You're on layovers at hotels. You can't be at home to go shopping for food the same way. So for me, what I do is I try to pack a few meals so I have a few sandwiches and salads with me that I can eat throughout the week to make those layovers a little bit easier. I don't pack every meal. Some people pack every meal. They try to plan breakfast, lunch, and dinner throughout an entire three or four day trip. That's a little overkill for me. I just don't do that but I do carry granola bars with me. I try to have uh, fruit and yogurt and really work out on the overnights when I can. That's really important, um, but it is tough. It is really, really tough as a pilot. Number three, is there any hope of living a normal life as an airline pilot? Not really. So, I mean, being an airline pilot, you don't work the normal nine to five job throughout the week that most people around the world do and it can make things a little bit challenging. I personally enjoy that. I mean, I like that I'm able to manipulate my schedule to get more days off in a row than I would have at a normal job. It's almost like you can have multiple vacations throughout the year sometimes when in other jobs, that's really not an option. But for the most part, no, you really don't live a normal life as an airline pilot. You can try to make it normal. The best way to do that is by living in base and not commuting so that you're not losing a lot of time before and after a trip. Number four, what's been your least favorite and favorite layover experience? So I think for me, my favorite layover experience recently was in Cincinnati, Ohio. I had a friend who's a pilot for another airline and I had a long overnight downtown. There was an FC Cincinnati soccer game that I bought tickets to to go with him. Um, that was awesome, that was super fun. Having downtown layovers instead of being out in the middle of nowhere is really fun, especially if you have a fun crew or you have a friend in town. Least favorite layover experience was recently I flew into Toronto and at about two in the morning, uh, the fire alarm went off in the hotel. So Attention. the speaker Attention. started saying, stand by Attention. for further instructions, stand by for further instructions. I didn't go out of my room yet, but then the speaker finally said, all elevators are closed, please evacuate the building immediately. And at 2 a.m. in the morning, I mean, we were all exhausted standing out there in the cold in Canada. Uh, that was not a fun layover experience at all. Number five, are you happy flying the Embraer 145? It seems pretty small. Yeah, I mean, this jet is definitely small. We have one seat on one side, two on the other. This is one of the smallest regional jets in the country, um, but I do enjoy flying it. I mean, it's a fun first jet experience. It's a forgiving airplane. It's easy. Um, I like that it is somewhat manual. So on SIDS and STARS, we don't have coupled VNAV capabilities or auto throttle. So we're really hand flying the airplane a lot. I like that. And the trailing link gear makes your landings really smooth. So even if you really mess it up, um, it doesn't end up being too bad. So I do like flying the jet, even though it is small. I am looking forward to a little bit more headroom though one day uh, in a bigger jet. Number six, where's the coolest place that you've non-revved to? I'd say Hong Kong is the coolest place that I've ever non-revved to. Um, it's an amazing city. There are islands all around that you can go hiking on. It's not just the city like most people think. And when you have the, um, the transit card there, you can use it for the metro, you can use it for the ferries, you can use it for ferries to neighboring islands. There's small Chinese sort of fishing villages. Um, there's a Southeast Asia vibe, but also there's a huge expat community there of British and Americans and Canadians, Australians, many of whom actually are pilots who live in a certain district in Hong Kong. And so if you want to escape the Southeast Asia feel, go back to some Western food, it's all available for you there. So that's a pretty amazing thing. And it's probably one of the coolest places I've ever non-revved to. Number seven, does the job ever get boring? For the most part, no, although I would say on longer flights, you know, for instance, some of our Ohio to Miami flying, which is three plus hours, it can get boring when you're sitting in crews for that long and you're just having a conversation and occasionally switching frequencies with ATC. Um, overall though, I'd say the job isn't really boring because we're constantly flying in and out of different airports. We have many legs a day, oftentimes bad weather, 
Uh, sometimes when the airplanes are broken, we're dealing with maintenance irregularities. So things like that keep the job challenging enough to make it not boring. Um, but it really depends on your attitude a lot of the time, I'd say. Number eight, what is the earliest wake up time that you've had so far? So my least favorite airline uh, flight that I do here is the 5.05 a.m. departure from Akron, Ohio to Chicago. It's an Eastern time and I'm based in Central time. So that means our van time to go to the airport is a show time of about 4 a.m. out on the uh, hotel curb, which means you wake up at about 3 a.m. And that's 2 a.m. body clock time. So you have to go to bed really early to get enough rest. That's a really tough flight and you're landing here before 6 a.m. oftentimes, which is when the airport is dead, there's really nothing even going on yet. Number nine, what's the longest day of flying that you've had so far? I started in Springfield, Missouri one morning, went up to Chicago, then to Cleveland, and then to Miami, and then to Birmingham, Alabama. That was about 7.9 hours of flight time. That was a really long day. Made a big loop all the way up from the Midwest, down south, and then over uh, back to Alabama. So that was a pretty long day. Number 10, the last question, what's next for your videos? So as I was saying, one of the videos I really wanna produce is an example of showing what it's like flying in and out of O'Hare. It is a challenging airport, it's unique. It's kind of a fun challenge sometimes. And a lot of people are wondering how it works. So that's a video I really wanna do. But as you guys know, I really try to focus on career topics to make your transition into the airlines just a little bit easier, to teach you some of the things that I wish I had learned before I showed up day one in ground school. So I'll continue doing some of those and I take many of my ideas from the comments section. So if you have comments or questions, those are the sort of things that I look for on Instagram, that I look for on YouTube, to be able to make content that will help you guys in your careers as you get started. Um, so keep leaving those comments. I really do appreciate it. And thanks for asking all of these questions, guys. I'll have more things coming up soon. So thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed the video.